We are going to talk to um, Kim Weaver. We're going to talk about her campaign. We're going to talk about the race there, uh, the changing, the changing dynamics, uh, especially after the race last night in Kansas. Um, it seems as though Democrats um, have a lot of potential of fighting and beating Republicans in um, districts that are normally considered to be extremely safe for um, for Republicans. And so uh, we'll, we'll talk with Kim Weaver in a moment and discuss her race. Um, but I'm also curious as to what you all think about the race in Kansas. I, I believe the fourth district in Kansas uh, last night that took place. Even uh, the, the, the fact that the, the candidate was able to get the race down to within single digits uh, without the help, much help at all from the uh, DCCC. Um, but that being said, let's talk about this race in in Iowa. I'm joined. Um, I'm joined by Kim Weaver. Kim, thanks so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm fabulous. Thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate you having me on your show and, and, and looking forward to talking about the race. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. We tried to connect before and um, but here we are today. So glad uh, that we could have you. So um, I have information here about your background, uh, about your work, uh, about your education. And instead of me reading your resume, why not tell the audience a little bit about you, but then specifically tell them about why you're qualified to take this seat from Representative Steve King? Certainly. Um, for the last 20 years, I've spent my life being an advocate for people who didn't have a voice. Currently, I am uh, somebody who represents people who live in nursing homes, assisted livings and residential care facilities, and I stand up for them when, when they don't have anybody else to stand up for them. Mm -hmm. And for 10 years before that, I worked with adults with developmental disabilities and chronic mental illnesses and help keep kids with developmental disabilities in their homes. Mm. And so my passion has always been about supporting people. And one of the things that I have said in, always on the campaign trail is, what I do isn't just what I do, it's who I am. Mm. And okay. that's why I'm running, because I deeply care about the people of the district. And I, I worked on the last two campaigns before mine and I saw that Steve King just did not represent the best interests of the people of this district. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking people to support diversity and decency over division. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, li I like that slogan. What you do is, um, or you're, or say it again. I don't want to mess it up. Say, uh, what you say in your campaign. <laughs> no girl, problem. Because it's great. Say it one more time. What I do, what I do isn't just what I do. It's who I am. It's who you are. I can't work a job where I don't feel like I make a difference. And Absolutely. so that's my passion. That's what drives me. That's that's what gets me up in the morning. Absolutely. So let's talk about um, the race uh, between you and Steve King. Um, what are the what are the polls looking like for you right now? And what are some of the um, advantages that you have that you feel that you have that may not be reflective in the polling? Well, there's really not any polls mm -hmm. at this point. Um, but what I have as an advantage is, and what most people don't realize, is that while I didn't cross that 50 plus one threshold last time, I had a higher vote count in all 39 counties than both Hillary Clinton and Patty Judge, who is mm -hmm. our Senate candidate. Mm -hmm. And not only that, every single precinct, precinct that our Senate candidate in all but two precincts than Hillary Clinton and that says a lot in a pretty deeply red district yeah and I had a lot of people coming out of the woodwork I I remember a man you know sending me an email he's a member of the Green Party and he went to the office in Sioux City and wanted one of my yard signs and they said well would you be willing to you know volunteer for the party and he said, well, no, actually, this is the first time my wife has ever let me put a yard sign out. And I'm Green Party and I'm supporting Kim. Uh, and awesome. so, and I had, yeah, and I, my, my hairdresser is a Republican. And she had a Trump sign in her front yard and my sign in the front yard. And so no party, Republicans, Democrats, they support me. Mm -hmm. But it's really difficult to get name recognition. And now I have that. Mm -hmm. And so it's. You know, it's it's not only was I willing to step up the first time, right? But knowing what I faced, I'm willing to do it again. 
And, 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 and that's what it's going to take, right? That's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show, because this is not your first time, um, I guess the saying is, at the rodeo. Uh, you've, you've, you've right, gone it's through not this, my first rodeo. And you've, you've, um, you've, you've been fighting, and it looks as though um, you have a connection with the community that could push you over the threshold. Um, draw some distinctions. I mean, it, it would be quite obvious um, the distinctions that we could draw between you and Steve King, but I want to hear from you. Like, what, what are some of the key things that stand out to you that distinguishes you, one, from Steve King, but then also that makes you a better candidate for or a better leader for that community? We're pretty much polar opposites. Um, I, as an advocate for seniors, one of the things that I talked about last time and still hasn't changed is I want to actually expand Medicare to cover nursing homes and assisted livings because generally what happens is people lose everything that they own mm. just to be able to get care in a nursing home. And Steve King wants to voucherize mm -hmm. Medicare and Medicaid. And what he doesn't realize is that it hurts farmers in our district. During the last two years, I worked with four different families who had to sell their family farms. And two of those farms were century farms, meaning they'd been in the family for over a hundred years. But Steve King didn't seem to care about that. Mm. Steve King recently took $20,000 in lobby funding to vote to sell our internet privacy. Right. I'm yeah. adamantly opposed to that. Uh, I've also proposed a, a program where young kids and, and parents with Parent PLUS loans could give back to their communities four hours a week to be able to have their student loan interest and payments deferred and have a portion of their payments forgiven after a year. Steve King wanted to increase, increase the interest rates mm -hmm. on student loans. And I'll tell you what, I'm pretty darn sure that student loan debt is our next national financial crisis. Absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why I was losing congressional districts. We went from six districts to five in 2002 and down to four in 2012. We're hemorrhaging people, which is mostly young people, mm. because they have this huge debt and they would like to come back to the area, but right. the cost of living is low, but also the pay is low. Right. I'm also a huge supporter, huge supporter of comprehensive immigration reform with a path to citizenship. And, and I'm sure most of your listeners know where Steve King stands on that. Yeah. Not only does he want to build one wall, but he wants to build three and electrify them. What most people don't realize is that the American Farm Bureau supports comprehensive immigration reform with a yeah. path to citizenship because they know that what King proposes and what Trump proposes will increase the cost of farm labor by 149%. The other thing, you know, King touts about how he's such a big supporter of the farm bill. I want to make industrial hemp legal for growth in the entire United States. Because currently it's not it's not illegal to have industrial hemp, but it can be illegal to grow it. And we import import mm. the majority of it from Canada. And you can make fabric, paper, yeah. <laughs> um, biofuel, so many things. And so we can be innovative with our agriculture and revitalize, revitalize rural America. Whereas, you know, I'm sorry, but I think Steve King just kind of panders to the people that he thinks is gonna give him money. Absolutely. And yeah. I'm all about working for people. So uh, a little bit more uh, about the district in your race, right? You're 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 gaining name recognition. You've been putting in all the effort and all the work uh, to do what you have to do. But this is a pretty solid, solidly Republican district. Um, I believe the Cook um, uh, Index um, is plus 11. So it's a really solid Republican district. But that doesn't necessarily mean in this environment that it, it would stay that way. Um, what are some of the things that you're doing besides, um, you know, besides the standard canvassing door to door, making phone calls? You know, wh what other things are you doing? Are you seeing in the race that indicates that you can actually swing this this district that is plus 11 for Republicans to blue? First of all, I'm, I'm one of those, the glass is half full versus half empty. Mm -hmm. So what I tell people is 60% of the voters are Democrat and no party. So let, let's, let's remember that. But this summer, what we're going to be doing is we're going get, to be getting out and talking on the doors, not just to Democrats. And that's something mm. the Democratic Party has kind of 
faltered with, and I'm on the state central committee, and I have, I have preached this to the mountaintops <laughs> that we cannot ignore Republicans and no party people. So my plan is we're going to get out there and talk to everybody. Yeah. And if somebody's not registered to vote, we're going to help them register to vote. And so we're starting early. I mean, it's early. Most yeah. people don't even start canvassing until next year. Right. Well, we're right. not going to do that. That's one of the things so that surprised me. So we're going to be at every door. Yeah, I, I was I was surprised when we first started having the conversation about you coming on. I'm like, like you know, you're seriously starting ahead of the curve. Yeah. But it's it's amazing how quickly the election cycles come come around, and so it absolutely makes total sense that you're hitting the ground right now. Um, Kim, thanks so much for joining us, and I, I'd like for you to just tell the audience how they could find out more about you, and if anybody ever wanted to volunteer or help you out, where they can do so. Certainly. Um, Go to our website, WeaverForCongress.com, and follow me on Twitter, Kim Weaver IA. We just reached 30,000 followers today. So oh, wow. follow us oh, on Twitter and connect with us on Facebook. We're welcoming you. <laughs> hey, I'm excited that's, about it. That's a milestone. You should celebrate that milestone. I'm not even at 30,000 <laughs> followers at this point. So uh, congratulations. And, uh, you know, we encourage anyone who wants to find out more about you to go to your website, uh, follow her on Twitter, and let's find out what Kim Weaver has to offer the 4th District of Iowa. Kim, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good night. You too. My pleasure.